good. <laughs> how are you doing? How are you right? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah. Well, I'm not all right. I'm going insane. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you on a phone or a laptop? A desktop. Can you see my video? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you not have it on yours? Yeah. Do you have a scary face right now? What's going on? No, it, sh it should have been doing it. I don't know why it's not. Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> Hang on. Oh. It's Max. He's like asking me. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I did. There we go. It's like, ask, ask permissions for everything. I'm just like, just do it, just do it. It's fine. But yeah, because I never use Zoom. We never use it with um, college. So I found this like a week ago. It's my new favorite thing. Well, weirdly, really? in the apocalypse, it's suddenly way more popular than usual. <laughs> I know loads of unis use it, but I've never. Yeah, yeah mom well, uses it for counselling stuff. So, well, thank you, thank you for agreeing to do this. Oh, it's something to do. I want to do more catchphrases as well. Like, yeah, it's gonna be. Uh, yeah, I, I have. I have loads of questions as well. Way more I thought I was gonna ask. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I thought we'd, we'd like do like an hour. If that's not, if that's not too, too much for you. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um. So, what what's like your area? I thought. We, I thought that's kind of my question. Yeah. So I'm gonna put my phone in whilst I'm actually sat in front of it because I'll forget. Um. There we go. So, um, well, I say like my, I did, when I was doing, well, at uni actually studying um, and doing research and stuff, yeah. it was different to what I found is more my interest now. Um, I guess you kind of find your feet though. Um, so now kind of society and impacts is more my interest. Mm. Um, whereas when I was at uni, I was looking at substance use and then I did my gender studies at, at master's. So, yeah, it kind of changed a bit, the shift. Um, I'm still interested in all the substance use stuff and everything. Um, it's quite a saturated field, though. Um, and I think, I think those, those like lines that like, kind of like separate different disciplines kind of mean less the longer you go in your journey, one might explain. Yeah, it. yeah. That's it, because so many people asking, oh, you know, is it law or is it sociology? Or is it, it's kind of, it, is every, it is everything, that's the thing. Um, especially now we've got multi agencies in, in criminology, so it's and everything merges now. So, so yeah, you kind of have to take take it all in and know a little bit about everything in a way. So yeah, I love that because I like read all over the show. I can't find, yeah. I can't settle on one subject very long. So I'm like, come on over, guys. The war is great. That's, That's right. it. Yeah, and the more you know, cause you feel realize how things fit in as well. I mean. It really, even when I did my PGC, that's kind of where it really fell into place as well. Because I did it at Oldham, and that's where I found more out about widening and participation and being able to keep people out of trouble by opening education to more people. And then that fit into like the criminology side for me as well. It's like, okay, this is like another way they're trying to get people off the streets and doing something else. And yeah, it all kind of fit in. Um, so you're always learning these things, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Let's crack on some questions. <laughs> okay so andrea is asking um what's it what's it like to actually work in this field is it as like glamorous as as like it's portrayed it's not but you no can... it's and also i think when people talk about it they think a lot of them think of like forensics as well forensic side which is definitely not that glamorous um but uh criminology it's, it's a lot of sitting around researching kind of like a lot of these very sociological courses it's kind of courses and, and it's subjects it's all based on research how do we find out more how do we stop it how do we encourage this you know um but yeah you have to really hmm how to put this not be interested necessarily in crime but in how to make pockets of people's lives better i think mm. that's what i found especially when you're looking at youth crime definitely people that look into youth crime are so dedicated to youth and helping them and that's kind of how it all feeds in and or you want to protect the elderly or create safe spaces for users or people on the streets so and homelessness is a crime what should it be <laughs> and all this kind of stuff oh don't start oh, that's not my whole whole like like phd <laughs> area it's a whole separate podcast right now 
yeah. And, and even, even, even if you were, you know, I don't know, a forensic, you know, a specialist at crime scenes, you spend a large portion of your time looking at blood and semen, if we're, if we're being totally honest. It doesn't sound that's like it to me. You I'm know? wearing a hazmat suit and yeah, that's pretty much it. Bagging and tagging, that is literally a forensics job unless you're lucky enough to get a manager's position. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be be like um you know like kind of like 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 a, like a profiler, um, and there's like two of those jobs, like just two, like that's it. Yeah, that's what you get. Good luck yeah. with that. Yeah, that's it. That's the only thing with this new approach. You have to, it's all streamlined and limited as to what jobs are available now, and yeah, cuts on the service. But you still enjoy it, even though it's not as glamorous as they say. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of finding my feet now to potentially find some time to research and actually get my head back into it again. Um, so I just yeah, read my journals that I get, my, my British Society of Criminology journals through every now and again and read those. This is like as close as I can get at the moment. And keeping in touch with people on Twitter, actually, that's really useful. Keeping up to date with what's going on research-wise. So, yeah. Yes, because you teach, well, you attempt to teach teenagers criminology, right? Yes, yeah, and that as well. Yeah. Yeah, which is weird because you, you, you perspective you start teaching because um, they're level three. Um, but criminology level three didn't exist when I was at college. Like that wasn't a thing. But then you start talking, you realise how much knowledge you actually have on this and you just deviate away from the course material and you find they're more interested in what you're saying than what the actual course is, is actually asking of them. And you're just like, well, we need this in the exam. Yeah, probably not. No, so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> if that's the boring stuff now. So yeah, but they're serial killers, they're obsessed with serial killers, so yeah. Who isn't? Who isn't? I want, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do like a whole separate one on that, so. Yeah, so yeah. many. I'm, yeah. I'm one of those teenagers, so yeah. But that's but, the key question, is it's like, well, what makes people do it? It's just like, well, that's, yeah, big, big question. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that is actually one of the questions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big question. Yeah. Uh, okay. That, that was for Andrea. Um, <laughs> Ryan's asking, um, how does one get away with murder? Uh, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not a nosh chest and we give like an outline as to how one commits murder. <laughs> but, um, I, I thought it's, 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 quite, it's quite a good one for like talking about like, like kind of like the best methods of like defense. Do you know what I mean? You know, for like, oh yeah, yeah. You know, well, you know, like different sort of types of like, like diminished. Uh, um, you know responsibility and stuff which is quite quite interesting yeah it is i i i always find it it's so tricky especially now i'd say more so now when we are obviously the more things we take into account so things like mental health and learning disabilities and all this kind of stuff the more you have to think about but then there's no one rule fits all then and then that's kind of the point of law and the judiciary system and then so we're kind of adding all these things in where it's like well actually no what about this and i was watching um what was it in january they had a three-part uh, ruth ellis uh, tv show on and talk about how in, in in the 50s the same laws didn't exist as they do now um, especially for women to protect women um who are like being abused and everything and growing up in an abusive household um and the whole thing was basically if she was tried now would she have well she wouldn't have been executed that's for sure but would she still got maybe got a life sentence or or a whole life tariff um and she yeah she probably wouldn't now they take into account you'd look at the, the fact that she grew up in an abusive household and and then she had an abusive partner and she shot him so and potentially had a coercive partner at the time as well to help her do it. And it's like, but she probably still wouldn't get a huge sentence now because we've taken those on board. And it's like, Once, should we? So one of the best forms of defence is to commit it in a different time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, definitely. I don't know for a man though. I don't know. I think only for women. It's, it's quite. I think it's quite um, gearing towards leniency towards women on that, and more so than men. But. That's probably oh, oh what because of, of, of notions of being vulnerable or caring yeah. or yeah they, that'll they, they, they didn't know any better it, uh, it, uh, yeah. yeah and men men are more violent and all that kind of stuff apparently mm. 
yeah, yeah I think so. I, I think like like the pleas of in, of insanity are quite quite interesting yeah because like even 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 when when you know the person in question like doesn't want to argue you know that in court like they're like you know like defense attorneys can still argue on their behalf it's just like yes. a standard yeah yeah let's let's let's, let's try and convince them that, that he was temporarily insane even even for like a few seconds which is enough to yes fine. yeah he was he was insane at the right time so we'll, 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 yeah we'll let him off that one yeah, it's because we were looking at what was it? There's a case. There's actually a case that for, for the course, and it's great because we're looking at all different theories and, and when you're pulling apart um, case studies, and there was a, it was a Robert Napper case, and he was he apparently he had a low IQ, like they actually counted him as having a low IQ. Oh, yeah. um, Asperger syndrome, ab abused when he was like sexually abused when he was twelve. Uh, bullied um witnessed his father of being violent against his mother and then he went on to commit violent rape and murder and then but it's like well what when you're looking at what theories apply here it's like where do you even start with that is, it, is it a biological I thing see it right now yeah is it, is it a biological thing is it a social learning thing is it to do with anything to do, could it be anything to do with disabilities we don't know um and yeah can you imagine just imagine that coming to you in court it just be completely mind-boggling you just couldn't even it just kind of seems to me that like even in, well in, in many fields like we're moving towards like a like spectrum or like continuum like un, like understanding of how we see things you now so yeah, yeah. yeah there's no there's no oh yeah he, he did it or, or he didn't do it or like there was there was several pushes little push factors you know, sort of tweaking making it more likely you know slight disposition i guess in a few cases where you where you have things like genetics being used to try and like argue someone's guilt which is, yeah, you know, which is you just wouldn't have been able to argue that in you know not so long ago. So it's quite interesting that you can have all these little. At what point do you like? Okay, okay, it's definitely you this time. But like, yeah, yeah. Time. a straightforward case of yeah, I just wanted to do it. Here we go. <laughs> but now there's got to be some kind of reason for it. There would have been a turning point of why people are thinking. Okay, we want to uphold the law. But then part of upholding the law is okay, but we also want to understand why people are doing it. Um, yeah. probably probably the result of that would be we want to figure out why people are doing it so we can stop it happening again. Hence criminology, pretty much. Um, yeah, why why does it happen? So whether that's biologically, societal impacts or anything, um, and then how can we see it coming or whatever? Oh yeah, yeah. Andrea was also asking what's the link between the environment and crime. So uh, yeah, see, that's yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> that's why I'm, I'm super, I'm really interested in stuff like that at the moment. Um, I guess by environment, maybe means like society, environment around you, potentially. Well, yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's a few right. things, isn't it? It's like, yeah, obviously, like your, your up upbringing is a lot like a large factor, but like, like she was saying, which is a kind of a good point, you get the ones you wouldn't necessarily think of so much, you know, like what, what, like what ideas they're exposed to. Yeah. You know, through, I don't know, like, like a certain television program, you know, where people are, Trying to think of an example, like like that movie Joker that came out not so long ago, which is yeah. which is really, which is which is awesome. But you know, it kind of like it had like the potential to like inspire someone in the wrong way, and like for them to like internalize those kind of you know ideas that mainstream society wouldn't tolerate, type thing. Yeah, so there's, there's other little things as well, which can always kind of kind of like play a part. You know. Yeah, I love. I love. I watched Joker. I loved. I was quite late to the party and watching Joker. But yeah, for me, obviously, that had like that had everything in it that I could possibly really have wanted, especially in terms of loving that the society element and crime and how how the strain impacts people. Um, it's fine, especially now at the moment as well. It's, it's well then not so much now in this situation, but then it was quite topical. Um, yeah, that was fascinating. But yeah, growing up in your environment. Um, yeah, we have we have this we have we have this space quite a lot actually. Um, I mean, it, when I was when I was studying at university, but even with my level threes, like, especially some of the very high flying ones, we get into this like, okay, you, you learn things. We all know that we pick things up from when we're little, and some of them are ingrained in us, and we live with them. But then you do unlearn things as well. You can correct behaviours. So, can like a social learning theory from when you're young? How can that really be used as an excuse necessarily? When, yeah, because there's plenty, rectify plenty of people who are going to be used and not commit any crimes. So that's it. Yeah. Um, so 
that is really interesting because yeah if it's something like that can apply to one situation but it might not apply to the next so how can it be kind of a, a rubric for um assessing a crime essentially because it might not be it might not be effective in a way yeah I, the way i kind of see it and connect well it seems to often like pan out is like you'll, you'll have you know um if you just like draw a line in the sand you have all these sort of factors like that so i know like the lower iq you're talking about or like the abuse or you know all the certain media influence or you know there's, there's countless ones right it's like hundreds of like like potentially it's if you get a unique combination of those fit together where you suddenly get something that, it, that then becomes psychotic yeah. whereas you know where if you were just exposed to you know like you like you might have a genetic like disposition towards violence it's like potentially maybe you know yeah, like you might enjoy violence but without all those other things like childhood abuse you might just go to a boxing club three or four times a week and not kill anyone right yeah so yeah i think i i, I kind of see it as kind of like a kind of like a like a fitting together and if you, if you if you take enough i'm not sure where that point is but yeah, there's yeah, a point. yeah. <laughs> that makes sense yeah there's like a very yeah very spe- specific sum of things that have to add together for you to become that explosive type of criminal or that might be a violent murderer in, in, as opposed to a robber for example yeah. or something like that you know things like robbery um i, I would say nine times out of ten are going to be environmental things something to do with society where you've been brought up or how society's impacted you financially and stuff like that mm. i don't necessarily think people that Except when you're, you know, 11 and you nick a bracelet from Claire's accessories or something like that. But I mean, like, actually go on to, bur- like, be a burglar. Um, yeah, I, that's definitely more of a need. Or you you just think, oh, you know, it's either a need or a want to live up, uphold a certain lifestyle so you want to be able to gain these things. The American dream type thing. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's, it's like you were kind of with her at the start in Claire's accessories, but she crossed the line somewhere. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. <laughs> that's it. Once you go beyond that, upgrade from Claire's accessories to top shop. That's that's. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but wow. we've all we've, we've all got that point though, isn't it? It's just like kind of like it's like society dictates where it is. And as you're saying with that like female example at the start, like she just ha- happens to be born in a time where she was behind that line, so it was all good. But yeah, just so easy could be on the wrong side of history. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, oh yes, it's quite a good one. I didn't know about this, right? But um, there's quite a few, quite a few people think there's like like a, like a serial killer in Manchester. I, know, I, mm-hmm. I was uh, unaware of this. So Kimmy is asking about well, well, what do we think our our thoughts on the canal? Well, the pusher. Like, oh, that's yeah. like such a cool name. But yeah, I know. yeah. What is the what is the likelihood of a of a um? A serial killer. I did look into it. There's, there has been a, like a, like a, quite a lot of deaths, like at least ten that have not been like a like coward for, way more yeah. than I would have thought. Um, so it's quite, yeah, it's quite interesting. I was kind of yeah, thinking about that environment a lot, and you know, well, the way it's like serial killers tend to operate, they, they do tend to have a preferred hunting ground that they, they generally kind of stick quite close to. I don't know. What do yeah, you think? but it's quite interesting with the pusher. I, I can't, can't start thinking about pusher without thinking of my uncle Acid songs. Um, but the pusher they found. Initially, it was a Canal Street thing, I, th- I think, because they found it in the canal, and the first one they found was near the can- Canal Street, I think. Yeah, yeah. But then they started finding found out in Salford. So they thought, from what I remember, that they weren't sure whether people were getting pushed at various points along the canal. Therefore, it wasn't isolated to Canal Street because people thought it was going to be like a homophobic thing. But then they were like, well, were they all being pushed in the canal at Canal Street? And then the bodies were floating, hence being found in different places. Oh, or yeah, was he just yeah. pushing them at different points of the canal? Um, so yeah, I, I don't, I never, never, really, don't even know the verdicts of that. Whether they, they actually discovered whether they floated, whether they were pushed at different points. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I, I th- like it said that there was, there was like a, a few hundred, like over the years, but in terms of just just the inner city canal part. It was something yeah. like 30, 35 drownings, but ten that were that were so you can see my hand. Ten ten that were unexplained. Like, and they're not sure. Yeah. It's a tra- it's a difficult one as well when you're looking at if you link it in as well with the fact they were all men. Yeah. But you're also looking at male suicide rates as well, which are high. So it's like how how 
do they know that they were all pushed? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and also Canal very easy to fall into as well. So there's quite a few options where how these people may have ended up in the canal. Um, but I would never rule out the fact that people have been pushed. Certainly, yeah. Mm. I've it's been in such an easy way. Yeah, because it, it's also it's also so like secluded. It is it is if if you're gonna do it, it it's really convenient, but. I was also thinking in terms of like masculinity and men, because that's like my kind of area. We are, we are terrible for risk taking. Mm. Um, I guess it, yeah. it wouldn't yeah, it wouldn't be out of the bounds of reason that they would they would be doing that. And, and, and I'm assuming they're all quite vulnerable in terms of being off their face on various alcohol and drug related things. So they are, they are quite vulnerable. Late at night on the canal, there's few reasons why you'd kind of be on the canal, I suppose um so yeah that's something to consider i think um and some of yeah some of them are completely isolated as well like, i mean i've walked back with people at two o'clock in the morning from salford up the canal to deansgate and that and there's just there's some horrendous parts you just like even in the daytime i wouldn't necessarily want to be walking down <laughs> so it, it, the whole thing makes me so uncomfortable because you get that real idea of isolation and that it would have been quiet it would have been dark they'd have been they'd have thought they're on their own it's quite terrifying, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Kimmy, we don't know. Oh, is, is, is there uh, no. The thing is, like, it, or anything, have they? And yeah. it's, it, what makes it difficult is that yeah, there's, there's not really like a, a clear motive, really. Like, I, I don't think yeah. that any any of these men are connected to, like to each other, other than the fact that they're men. Yeah. So, I mean, not enough CCTV on canals to actually prove anything. So. It's true. That's true. We'll we'll keep trying on that one, Kimmy. Thank you for your question. Yeah. <laughs> give, give us more information. More information. Yeah, I'm not because I've not seen anything about the pusher in ages. It was I remember just being blasted over the news for quite some time, and then nothing. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm, I'm surprised it it com like passed my awareness completely because there, there, there was loads, there was loads of things about it. I don't know. This, this 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 one this first question that I, has been on my mind for like the past like few weeks it's from Gabs. Um, like, how do, how do you think crime is going to be affected by social isolation? Mm. Yeah, no, it's I've been worrying about this a lot. Yeah, it's a strange. It is. Yeah, I've not really had time to actually process it because it's pretty much been. Oh, you're teaching now. Isolation change your entire way of working and that's pretty much been my life so far um but it's, it's something i really want to dwell upon i think now because i mean it's no joke that we are literally entering a more of a prohibition era again and yeah, I was saying before, learn, there, there will like be like an underground kind of like yeah, alcohol that's it. sex trade emerging straight away yeah there's yeah. there's um, if you do anything like this every single time it's happened it's pushed everything underground Every single time, patterns throughout history, all this, everything just gets pushed back underground, which means anyone that is smart enough to want to carry out the things that they want to do, they will make it really hard to find, which will make it more dangerous. And, and that's probably what will happen. Um, there's absolutely no way, and especially now that they're saying, we're limited, we're li limited police, um, limited other agencies that help the police, the police on the streets dispersing gangs so what about the rest of them yeah i i even read somewhere that that i'm, I'm, I'm on like, like like the statements that like they weren't going to bother with like low level crimes which one's quite relative you know quite subjective really depending on where, where you are but also like why would you why would you advertise that well, by the way guys <laughs> yeah. as long as you don't kill anyone we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna look into this that's it well there have been cases over um uh he's in I can't remember where he was. Um, there, anyway, there was a head of police, chief of police, who changed the priority of what his unit were looking at. So they weren't basically stopped looking for um, small drug criminals, so people that were like small time dealers, people that were growing small amounts of drugs or holding small amounts of drugs. They completely just didn't bother about. And they prioritised domestic abuse instead. And I found that the legal levels of drug use maintained, they didn't increase um, just because there was more of a freedom and fluidity about how they were running it all. 
and obviously mm-hmm. domestic abuse and I got focus and things improved there um so the focus thing is quite interesting because it's like we're taking our eyes away from here now won't necessarily increase that crime um yeah so that's that'll be interesting to see yeah oh yeah maybe, maybe we'll, 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 if what's right I'm interested how drug dealers are going to operate in this incl- in this environment. They're just going to downsize, you know. It's just, 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 just no more bodyguards. It's just just going to be them individually going around seeing all their friends. That's very, oh, that's a very good point actually. Because yeah, if they can't, hmm, yeah, because they can't be in large groups. Yeah, if you've got a heavily controlled street, then which I believe some there actually already are some that have been controlled then you can't have people knocking on your door all the time. <laughs> you can't be leaving the same people's cars and you can't be. So, yeah, we're interested on that. I, um, I suspect what we're going to have, or well, this, like a new type of crime where people go out for runs and happen to meet other people on runs, coincidentally. Yeah. Um, and there are, there are you know, exchanges take place uh, up at various parks or in broad daylight. Or, or, the, or some sort of like drive-by with cyclists where they, have, where they exchange. It's kind of like a fitness dealing or something, kind of. That, yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, fitness, yeah, but there wasn't, there wasn't actually like a time frame on how long that fitness could take. So, let's go for a no, nine-hour walk. Yeah, I know. I need only the one walk a day. Yeah, uh, but, one, but the one thing that is obviously is concerning, and I don't know how whose radars it's been coming up on, but it has been coming up on education particularly. Um, is the crimes that are going to definitely increase is going to be domestic abuse in this situation. Um, and that's that's the terrifying thing. That's the really sad thing is that there's nothing really we can be doing to protect domestic abuse when people can't leave their homes because we just can't tell. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. I mean, yeah, you have nowhere to go. You yeah. legally legally mandated <laughs> to not to not go anywhere. That's it. Yeah, and that's yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know what they've done to even think about it it's not you know you can say i'll call this number but then you know if it's a particularly controlling household or relationship then how how do you go about doing that you know it's it's that's a worry um yeah i mean things like murder and stuff will probably decrease i imagine (laughs) you'd hope (laughs) unless again it's domestic um yeah, well, yeah, potentially, but I mean, not that I'm advertising it, but no. people, people are in, are in in their houses alone. You know, how would you know what 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 was going on? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, but things like trafficking and stuff will probably decrease or be more obvious anyway. So. Mm. I mean, I mean, obviously, you you gave a gave example of like domestic violence, but even if you were in a, if you you know if you were in a you know a good, a, a good healthy relationship you know you're now going to be under like tremendous strain because it's just not yes. normal to spend 24 hours a day together for weeks months potentially yeah, i know that is it there will be <laughs> everyone's gonna come out a different person on the other side aren't they yeah that's that's um i think a lot of people are concerned about that as well yeah what do you, yeah so what do you what do you think about in general the mental health aspect then yeah, it's because uh, I'm quite a, I don't know, touch and go with like wanting to be around people personally. And I think a lot of a lot of people are, especially people that are used to living on their own or being mm-hmm. on their own, or doing a lot of things on their own. Um, and it's not even, especially now in this situation, it's not the fact that we're not allowed to go outside this stage, you know, there's rules about it, but it certainly feels like you might as well not go outside. You know, it's just kind of yours. I, I felt locked down since this even started because I was fully aware that this was going to happen. Yeah. So that pressure hits you a lot earlier than it, it's actually being initiated in a way. Yeah, it's kind of like a lockdown in your mind first, and then yeah. and, and then it happens in all the places, and just kind of, yeah, kind of mirrors that. I'm just kind of the same as you. Like I was at like a lockdown a week before because, well, you know, well, if you work in academia and stuff, you tend to news will hit will hit you first you know yes as you, as you know so i i've been finding it extremely exceedingly difficult actually i must admit i didn't realize just just how much you value that that interaction 
and 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 then obviously this is great but this is it's not the same there's no, definitely no. something missing from this isn't it yeah yeah that's it it's, and it's just it, it is that feeling and it, and it, it's, it does like that it does actually look criminology it's like a feeling of not having the freedom even though it's not necessarily a literal sense but you do feel like you have a lack of, lack of freedom like this um so you can understand why people under certain pressures in society and that behave differently or do different things um and you might get some really bored arsonists starting up at home or something like that you know because people are just going completely crazy in the houses yeah um, it's, it's kind of like um well it's nationwide like it's like solitary you know confinement isn't it? It, it it's weird as well like like some people you know like in those sort of like prison environments We'll, we'll we'll just take to it like a duck to water like they have that kind of inner calm and they'll they generally prefer it i'm trying to think of like a famous example like um oh like uh the unabomber you know like was it was ted gazinski or whatever his name was like yeah, yeah. That, that was a dream because he spent his whole life his whole actual life living in that tiny you know cabin somewhere so, like it wasn't remotely like psychologically stressful for him yeah and they caused him no issue but you know you, you put most people in there and yeah. their psyche just begins to erode so I'm not sure what those differences are, but it's quite yeah. interesting now, which I think, to it. That, yeah, creating that feeling of, hopefully people, hopefully people get more of an idea when, you know, when they say, oh, prisoners, you know, all these prisons are lush anyway, it's not much of a punishment and everything, but there are, there's, everyone is moaning, with all their home luxuries is moaning about sitting inside. It's like you have everything you want and you're sat inside. In prison, yeah, you have you might have an Xbox or a TV, but you don't have everything there. You don't have your family. You don't have you probably don't have a sofa, I imagine. Some prisons might, I don't know. Um but she it's still if it's impacting you, it's gonna impact them. You know, it's 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 because you've lost something that's not quite tangible. Yeah. Like, and I think like unless you unless you've been a prisoner, you you would yeah. not understand. It's more. It's more than just the walls, isn't it? It's, it's something. It. So it's it's something up here, definitely. Like maybe it maybe is like a state of mind thing or something like that. Um, yeah. Don't know. I always wonder maybe how many of them, especially ones that do crime for financial benefit, like legitimate financial. So maybe professional burglars, for example, drug dealers, that kind of thing. Especially, I mean, I mean, I know this with, with drug dealers anyway. That going into prison is literally just part of the job. So you're going in there with that mindset, just like, well, this is just something I've got to do as a part of it. Got caught, just serve my time, go out, probably do it again. Because mm. reoffending is ridiculously high. Yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah, one of that has a big difference. They, you know, they, it's, some criminals will just accept it as part of their job. And you go into it, but then you get the rid ridiculously high suicide rates of, in women's prison because generally they, they get arrested for petty crimes a lot of the time and it's more mm. that's a survival thing so you're you're stealing nappies or whatever for for a very good reason and, and ha having to be taken away from your family unit is a dreadful thing so it's two very different things and obviously lots, there's lots of men that do it as well but yeah yeah it is it is, it is fascinating i've got one student that wants to also go into um the mental health field of criminology so i look forward to whatever she's going to do in the future <laughs> finding these things out or what, to be some sort of like practitioner in the prison system or something. yeah yeah mm. uh, i gotta say like i've well, well, well the past few months like i've moved into like criminal justice like the system in general the research and how it all works and stuff and just, like literally like like i was just it just it kind of like destroyed all my like i don't want to say like optimism but I, i'm certainly not as cheery by it as, as i was like, like <laughs> before I went in. so i can remember kind of like like what it was, it was like one of my first weeks isn't that and we, we were looking at like a list of like all these different like interventions that they that they'd done on like youth offenders and old people and stuff and um, to see you know see which ones worked and by how much and stuff and i was like is there some like some like is, is this like a like a like a rejects pile or something like that i mean like, why i was like well like like the effect on these is it's, it's either non-existent or it's it's negative like it's making them worse he goes and he's like yeah 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 that's that's not even that unusual <laughs> like, what oh, what are you yeah. talking about like most of the like well like a lot of like a large portion of the of the, of the program that they try and just 
make it worse. Can you imagine yeah. how you make it worse? Yeah. God, that's terrifying, isn't it? You could, teach, but, them, yeah, we, you could teach them gardening skills and, and, and yeah. you would expect at least to be like the same rate of, rate of uh, you know, reoffending, but... Make it worse. <laughs> it's, it's kind of rejection to what was things that come to gardening whilst you were in prison. It's, go out and be worse about it yeah yeah does, does something work better with some ages though because i know with the the token system mm-hmm. um which is televised is a very common thing in prisons um especially in the us but i don't know if it really is common um so obviously you do good things you get tokens you can spend them on nice things you get them taken away to do bad things and yeah it is televised as being very popular and it happens everywhere but apparently it doesn't um and but it's also it works better in young offenders than it does in older offenders so there's something along the line as you get older or maybe through experience or a different value of money maybe if you're having different values sorry um on on money uh that you, you kind of lose it as you get older so when you're younger they kind of see all the tokens you can get nice things but when you're an older offender they just don't see it as valuable yeah, kind of a mixture of things there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And well, no, you're right. Like that kind of, it's kind of like a like a restorative kind of model, isn't it? Like they tend to use to the younger ones. Yeah, it yeah, works. But yeah. as obviously as you, as you get older, you tend to get I think more fixed and siloed in the way you think. And if you spent half your life in in it, you know, an institution like the prison as well, then that just I think it just not naturally narrows your. I don't know. You're at, at the very least, you're like us and them thinking, as in like they're the, they're they're the enemy, and that's just like the way it, I see it. Because like why what what I sort of found working with populations like that is like the level of like cynicism and just kind mm. of in general like anger, and in some cases justified anger at like the, at the, the wider system more generally. Yeah. And, uh, breaking that down is very really difficult. So yeah. So if you haven't if you haven't got there then. Yeah. No. Don't bother. Probably. Yeah, I can understand from when they're younger, they may not have had good experiences with transactions like that, so they probably will never have it. I don't know maybe what the transition rate is from those that it did work on when they were used, say they went into them going into adult, had to work on the same system, whether that would transfer, so they continue to see that model. Um, But then also I wonder for those that go in as adult offenders, are they criminals because they've never had a value towards things like that, which is why they may steal, why they may commit crime, because that fact of actually earning something and working towards something to be able to gain the benefit from it just doesn't exist in them. They just never learned it. I don't know, it's true. I can, I can like re- remember working in like some of the like boroughs and sulfurs, you know, as like, a, like a support worker years ago. And yeah. the fact that I, I had a job was just like peculiar, just like some of the kids that I work with. Like, why, why, why would you do that? And I was like, because you get your own money. And I was like, well, you get money, though, don't you? Like, if you like benefits and stuff. And like, they went wrong. Like, I, okay. it's not like you can just, you know, just call them idiots. Oh, you, know, you don't, don't understand the system. No, they they, are, they get really, really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, if, if everyone they know, um, you know, normalizes that behavior, then, yeah, why, yeah, why, why, why would you not? Make, yeah. it make, it's, it's perfectly rational by, by their model. You're just seeing it from, your kind of like almost moral like like superiority kind of thing a little bit you know like, yeah you know, yeah so. i've got i've got quite a good range um in my class of people that i like that but um yeah the ones that the ones that don't know well not not the fact they don't know what they want to do after college they don't want to do anything after college they don't want to go to university they don't want to work and they'll openly admit that but they literally when you ask them what they want to do do they have any interests nothing absolutely nothing at all and it's like until your class until your class no 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 No. actually conversation good conversation um but then you get ones that will have a really strong work ethic and work loads of hours outside of college you know they're 16 17 they have a really strong work ethic and they work in college and let's just in, in that class of you know class of twenty, all from a similar area around so around South Manchester, yeah. um, and there's the very polar opposites, and it's it's fascinating to kind of see. 
but it's kind of like what we talked about before where you have like kind of like push and pull factors don't you like clearly that student with that with that really strong like work ethic has some sort of like protective factor in his makeup so that, that those other that those that his peers didn't have whatever that is you know whether it be you know, like a really like inspiring granddad or grandmother or something or something yeah. that was able to just kind of like snag him because it's the same like you know I've, I've worked with with so many kids who it was almost hopeless and it was like it's like they were set and there was nothing I could do like mm. and I could have just screamed <laughs> wisdom or truth bombs at them all day long it would do nothing and I just I thought well I just I just accepted that and just did the best you can but as you say every now and then you hit one and they just get it and it's like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter like the sky's the limit you know and I've got one or two you know kind of like high high high, high flyers I suppose and I, yeah and I'd like to say oh yeah it's it's what we do. It, it, you know, it's, it's definitely it's, it's our inspiring teaching, or whatever. but it isn't. There's something there that I can't quite quantify. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, that's why I kind of spend, and I'm glad um, to be in or have been in, in this kind of newer set of people training and teaching, and also to do with my tutors that I had as well when I was doing PGC. It was very much on obviously the whole learning styles things out the window and everything, but it was there is something you unlock in every single student type and and that's what I, and that's that's kind of what I went in on there were some that you just knew you wouldn't have to worry about and they'll just do their thing but they, then there's the ones that you'll either be you'll be dragging through or you might flick a switch and it'll be completely different but it's the ones in the middle which can kind of go either way and but they're kind of aiming towards the slightly failing side and then you have a conversation with them. It's like, oh, okay, actually, no, you need to go and talk to people about dyslexia because actually you're not taking in what you're reading properly and you're not understanding this properly and it's about your writing and then it's all those tiny little things that they can do or have access to, but mm. it's never pointed out to them. Um, so, I, don't, yeah. I, I don't think people realise how, how all, all these different ideas like inter intersect in quite like in, in, you know, in, in interesting ways. So like, it's kind of like one side, it's like, you know, like the school element of like removing those barriers to learning, but then yeah. that that whole that that links completely into their like tendency to offend, and, and, and you know and it's kind of like with, you know, with like you know, you know being be any sort of criminal and being homeless, for example, or like they have weird like connections where they, all these all these things will tend to like tend, tend to come together. But I don't think like we like that's like appreciated. Like it's, it's not like a you know, like a, kind of like, an, like a like a big picture. Like we tend to work really well in little pockets of, of activity. I don't tend yeah, to like yeah. like connect out very well. It sometimes makes me quite frustrated. I think I think that's why I left like sport yeah. and moved into social policy kind of stuff. I was getting so frustrated with it. Yeah, there's, there's, people, there's people like you who are working really hard, but at like right at the top, you're the ones making all the decisions, of all yeah. the, all, the, all that political you know prowess. I've yeah. never even spoken to like like a youth offender. No, this is. I mean, this is kind of. I think this is why I've been so stubborn with it, though. And I've met, and I'm so lucky with some of the people that I work with. Have a very similar ethos, and it's people talk about the whole you know communities of practice and everything, and you should have a community of practice. It's like, well, no, you don't get to you up there. Don't get to decide that. And Ofsted don't get to the side music practice because they, they happen organically from the bottom. That's what we form. And we do without them telling us to do it. Um, but yeah, if, like, it's, it's kind of sticking by your guns of like, when they come in, it's like, well, you're not supposed to be doing that. You're not supposed to be speaking in that way and encouraging them in this way. It's slightly inappropriate. And it's like, yeah, but look at the beginning of the year, look at them now. It's like, you want progress. That's it. Therefore, how we're doing it works. And yeah. they'll have they'll eventually have to change. They will have to change eventually, um, because they can't keep going around schools and colleges being like, "But this isn't like this." You know, you're not trained to be in Redbrook universities. And all kind of stuff. It's like, it's the, "Cause not everyone's going to get there." That's it's not everyone's going to get there. <laughs> no one wants to go there. So, you know, everyone's individual. Keep it that way. You know. Yeah, but it's it's kind of the same with crime as well. I think in general. Or it, like there's not that much effort to really appreciate their like world view. Yeah, you know? like, that, that's that, that's where you start. Like it's kind of like um, you know, like like counterterrorism type of thing. Like you know, like like if you if you're like attempting to to fight like a set of ideas, like in church ideas, which is what crime is in my view. 
you know, obviously combined with other things like Charlie the Fuse and things like that. You know, you have you have to start at that level. Like, what are their base set of assumptions? Like, how are they how are they tending to see, you know, the world? And you start with those, and then once you you know once you can start to you road those in a good way, you can put some doubt that maybe the way they say it's not the best way. Maybe smashing that car window is not the best solution to get a car. You know, but it's just like we're quite like no no this is a lot. So what it is? Yeah. yeah. And this is going back to the whole thing. Like, it's like people want now want to understand more of why, but then sometimes you get caught up in the yeah, but this was wrong. But it's like, but we've been trying to find out why and how is this happening. And then um, talk about smashing cars as well. I don't know if we've been seeing that kids have been smashing like delivery vans at the moment so people can't get their food. Um, oh, okay, and and obviously there's like a such a strong moral like reaction to that, like 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 straight away. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, yeah. It's like. I'm not going to get my delivery for another two weeks now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, NHS staff being robbed at knife point for their badges because obviously they get privileges. So, and I think it sounds awful, but this is kind of how I, I always think and unthink and rethink things. Yeah, we know that's an awful thing to do. However, yeah. it was, we're in a lockdown situation now because people couldn't stick by basic rules so you know there's a bad bunch of people out there essentially and then you give priorities and privileges to people yes they are essential workers but you are pointing these people out and saying look at these great people they can have all these benefits now which is only going to point out the obvious to people that aren't going to do good because they're just going to see it as they get privileges by having that badge i want those privileges therefore i take that badge Something like that only works when, like, all the population kind of buys into like the, like the legitimacy of that model. So, like, you know, you have such a large section of population who has no really like who doesn't who doesn't really identify with it, and like historically hasn't really benefited from it. Yeah, then yeah. it's not it's really, it's not a it's not a particularly moral issue for them, which I, I think yeah. is quite quite interesting. You know, we see it as like it's like an attack upon our like a moral conception of how we, you know what, what's right and wrong like you, you're overcomplicating it like, like that, that's really not you know how they're seeing it do you know what i mean we kind of yeah. like we put i feel sometimes because like we feel it and and i feel that too like straight away like inside that makes me angry immediately like mm. we're, we're, we're putting things on it yeah they just aren't there really no no i have nothing mm. yeah <laughs> that's it yeah it's sweet yeah it's, it's interesting that the flavour of the day at the moment, isn't it? It's kind of, and it always depends on what tweets just come out from the government as well, or whatever, whatever news things happen. And there's always a different issue. It keeps rotating, I've noticed, on, on Twitter and Facebook. People first moaning about, can I go to the shops? Then it's, there's no delivery slots. Then it's something cr- like crimes happen in relation to the lockdown. And then it's back to, can I go to the shops? And it just keeps happening in this like cyclical manner. I'm just like it's, like, it's driving me nuts looking at it. But it's fascinating to see who's moaning about what and at what point and all this kind of stuff. And then today it was um, children shouldn't be doing these celebrity workout videos in the morning. They should be prioritising education. And it's like it's, it's like there's no breath in it. And then there's loads of like academics kicking off about it saying this is the only time we get to spend together they have all this time to study it's like well yeah then as long as they're handing their work then it doesn't really matter what time of the day you do what you know you're not we feel like we're being watched and, and governed in this matter but it's like we're not you can actually do what you want in your house at whatever time it's just that they're just trying to reinforce the fact that yes exams may not go ahead but there will be some form of test or something yeah. to give grades the world won't end. No. yeah it Do ran before people? the tests it will run, yeah. it will run after the test that's it it's just like it's just to say your kids just should be doing their schoolwork still which the, yeah they should be easter's next week week after you know yeah well yeah i think i think there's you know a few like factors at play there which are, are all quite psychological so on the ones that obviously people are in a, in a very intense kind of space so i think it's naturally it's 
play into their anxiety and their like neurotic natures yeah. in general. It's like it's bringing out the the worst in all of us, like me included. I'm engaging in like in like Facebook arguments. I would never waste my time. With yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just this way we're in. And then it it also feeds into like how our like news cycle works now. Whereas you know, like you know, 50 years ago, you know, the news would have been in like a newspaper. You would read it. Okay, I'm done now. Then you get on with your day. But like, there's no end to information. Yeah. And and yeah. like wildly conflicting information at all at all hours of the day from various sources at the time. So you can't ever stop like processing information or just being fed into you. So like yeah. how how can that be psychologically healthy? Or you or how can you even make decisions that's like being paralyzed by just an onslaught of fucking data all day? Yeah, I mean and uninformed well because it's because as we have become so media hungry, um I, I mean newspapers were probably the safest i'd say even when it got to people being able to report live and then social yeah. media coming in that's when the danger happened because people would start reporting things before so say when speeches happen like say boris johnson and that people are doing updates and and saying it and giving it out to the public as it's happening so not all the information is there it's like at least a newspaper you have to write that up after it's the event and then get it checked and then send it out yeah. So at least it's coherent, which at the moment is not coherent. So well, what about this? They've not said about this. Like they've not fucking finished yet. It's like just give them a minute, and then we might have some more information. It's, so it, it's, just, it's like a perfect storm of of like psychological like primes and like biases and just yeah, uh, like othering, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And like, so with last night lockdown speech, everyone was like, well, what about this? What about this? It's like, it happened at half past eight at night. Maybe wait till nine o'clock in the morning and we'll have some more information. Are you going to ask to write the second? Probably not. You can wait until nine o'clock in the morning. You're not in work. You're not going anywhere. So you might as well wait. You know, then we'll have some more information. <laughs> yes. I only have four eggs. Is four eggs enough? So we were, you know, we're tough for a week anyway. These are, these, these are the questions that now entertain my mind. Whereas before they were meaningful and profound uh, <laughs> what's what's the egg ratio i don't know but yeah yeah. yeah i know what you mean it's like a plague and you know i like i like to think i'm a little bit more like resilient i suppose in like the layman and i'm i'm dying so i, I can't i can't imagine how everyone else is doing yeah yeah it's an adapt adapt thing isn't it yeah i think i'm quite lucky because i'd 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 been self-employed a couple of years ago, so I kind of knew what working around the house would be like. It wasn't the same situation. The pressures weren't the same. Um, and I definitely didn't have to try and coordinate 20 students online at one time to teach them. Mm. Um, but that kind of feeling of, well, I, I need to work now, can't go out or don't have the money to go out, that was still there. So I'm, I was kind of not struggling too much at the moment i am i'm itchy because i have to i can't go to the gym um, that's that's really annoying that's the, that's the real problem here yeah yeah I, I can't like at home workouts aren't quite the same as deadlifting and i'm trying to think creatively about how to do these things but if I if, if, I, if i've been given a warning i would have ordered like 40 bricks to my house <laughs> yes there you go yeah fortunately no yeah. I'm saying, but, yeah. I well know, it's uh, tricky I, you've you've answered all 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 their questions, Holly. So thank you very Aww. much for giving up your time tonight. That was good fun, thank you. But yeah, it's been fun. So yeah, so thank you very much. I will I will, I will steal no more of your time. It's been nice oh, to you. Have a yeah. good night. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.